Hey, I thought I'd make a quick video about some new builds that have come out in the last couple of days. Um, some of these are these are going to be hybrid builds taken from Inven, from some of the from some of the Korean theory crafters out there. I've been reviewing what they're up to. There's a lot of talk about a patch and a bug fix or a, a nerf to some of the core stuff in this build, and I'm going to talk about that as well. The idea of this build is to build a ton of energy and to use it to support double two-point spenders. So the core of the build, at least the Korean version, looks like this. And we'll, we'll go through the, we'll go through the whole thing. So one of the big things, and this is something that I found in my own testing as well, this basic attack is actually one of our highest highest DPS attacks. And not only that, it does a large amount of neutralization damage, so it breaks it, it breaks the bar. It's also, if, you, if we look at our thing, at, at this sort of translation, and I double-checked this with some with my, with my wife, who's Korean, I asked her, but it does claim to, it has cut. So it can get us some of those extra parts from killing bosses or something like that. I'm not 100% sure what this does. However, at level 10, the damage on this is really respectable. It's on a six second cooldown, four seconds after the attack finishes, because this cooldown starts right away. It does 2000 damage approximately to, you know, boss type enemies that I generate that I generate in here. That's pretty good. We can compare that to our big finishers, which do about 10,000 damage on 24 second cooldowns, right? So it's not quite as good. This has about you know a fourth the cooldown this would, so this is approximately 8,000 damage in the same time so these big finishers seem to be worth the expense they do about 25 percent more damage but this is a great core skill followed up our typical rising kick this is just general utility cc has a fairly short duration in these builds they're not maxing thunder kick they are using it but they're using it as a mobility as a mobility skill with some light damage is not bad, but not great. The core of the skill is resource, resource generation. So I want to take a look at how much resource is actually generated by our buff whispers when we hit something with it. So let's just spawn a training dummy. These things take like huge amounts of damage. They have no defenses and they're improperly scaled. So ignore the damage number. But let's look at this bar. That's insane, almost a full bar from one cast. Right? So that's why we have these selections, again, the crit buff, move speed, critical, whatever you want in here, tier one, up to you. They're a big fan of this move. This is a, this one is one that I loved while leveling, you know, just juggles enemies. Um, the generation on it isn't, ne isn't actually the best, but you will notice that it's got neutralization medium, and it's got a medium amount of... I believe neutralization is CC. You want some things like triple punch, uh, sorry, not triple punch, pummel, penetration, and neutralization. Penetration is the one that we're really, this is the one that breaks the, uh, the, the enemy's armor. Anyway, so here, this just, because this has the cooldown reduced by five seconds, this is an, a huge DPS increase. This makes this a very high DPS move which is why we're investing it. This is our so-called short rotation. Right, let's turn off infinite cooldowns and you can see about how long it, it lasts. Right, and then this one's coming back up. So as you can see, there's a little bit of downtime, but this is a fairly fluid solid rotation. I should note that I currently have 5% CDR. Uh, so there's that. Okay, so then the real mechanics of the build this energy generation and this thing at seven points. So instead of using bubble vortex to generate damage stacks, this one uses the increased duration combined with the 50% increased um, energy generation. This thing does almost no damage. The damage is, is super terrible and, and pretty negligible, but it lasts for 27 seconds on a 30 second cooldown. It's got a pretty much 100% uptime and watch it just tick up this bar. Like, look at this go. This is this is what we're using it for here. And the idea is that with that, we can actually support 
double spender. So I'm just going to demonstrate here in about five seconds. Three, two, one. There used to be a bugs, the patch they've talked about. This used to tick slower, but to have a damage increase bug where the damage would increase based on duration reduction. So it would squeeze the full duration into the sh into shorter duration. It's similar to the bug that I demonstrated in a previous video with this skill, how increases in reductions in duration to duration damage talents scale improperly. They do too much damage. Um, there was a similar bug here. They say it's been fixed. I haven't gone back and retested. You can look at the videos to see how things you at least used to work with our earthquake skill. All right, so we're going to start off with a spender here to drop our energy. This thing never hits the target dummy. Not sure why. All right, we got a second spender off. So let's see if we can get that first one back up before. You'll notice that we're, it's got five seconds left and we're easily over cap here. Even with, with missing that ability. No, it's just a little more realistic to get off the boss. So the idea here is, is high mobility, but it's mainly hitting both of our big resource spenders on cooldown. So our, our core damage is actually this guy here. This is our main damage. Nice thing is this actually does a fairly reasonable amount of um, crush damage, whatever whatever it's called. But we've got dragon for crush damage, and this guy does fairly solid amount as well. So let's actually take a look at that. So uh, big guy. Excuse me. So let's look at this crush bar. So you can see that we're taking the crush dead bar down fairly quickly. This thing does actually has very little crush damage, so I'm gonna waste it, but look at the crush bar damage that's doing. And this ticking damage actually does almost nothing. Let's see if we can... Yeah, look at that. Nice crush. So this build is based around sort of a core damage rotation, core energy generation, double spender with a secondary theme of high crush damage. And that pretty, mu that pretty much covers the core build. I'm from here on out going to talk about variations. Um, you guys are f free to stay or go. So. One thing about this build, our ground pound, this thing, this is our highest damage finisher. When we nail this area, this thing does some 10,000 damage. Here, let's demonstrate. So, uh, 1024. Oh, shit, we're, we're still on cooldown here, sorry. So although it does a lot of a lot of damage, it can be a little bit difficult to, to land, and it's got and it's a, somewhat inconsistent, and doesn't support that crush theme. So I'm going to show us some changes we can make if we do want to support that crush theme a little bit more. Okay, so 1024. So with the burn, we do about 10k damage. It's about where it sits, yeah. So. This thing is doing about 10,000 damage, that's pretty darn good. Now let's check out our Tiger Uppercut, or whatever this Dragon Punch is called. Just check, is Dragon Punch a back attack? It is. Yeah, so this has heavy penetration and is a back attack, so whenever possible we want to get behind the, behind the mob. Let's just summon another one. Let's see if we can get the charge, there we go. So you see, this one dealt more like 7,000 damage, including the, uh, the forced crit. Let's do that just one more time. Yep, it's the same. 7, 8,000 damage right in there. So this one hits harder, but does not crush the crush bar very much. So one thing we can do if we want to go into 